it's our turn to decide what it is. But, you know, we're split into Labour, Conservative, Liberal Democrat, and not one of the three parties will even think about freeholds, reforming the law of land ownership, restoring benefits that would make homeowners or recognize homeowners for what they are, the majority of the population. You know, people haven't woken up to it. We're still, we're asleep, we're, we're asleep at the wheel. James Woodhouse, I'm a professor at De Montfort University. I was minding my own business in a rather down market hotel in Bermuda in the summer, and who should walk in but Lord Goldsmith, um, who was telling everybody that Al Qaeda was uh, a major threat in uh, Bermuda uh, to lots of lawyers assembled there. So I would like to endorse your point that the uh, ownership of these obscure islands is. Uh, and their colony status is quite important. I'm not sure all the money that is deposited in um, iffy-looking banks in Bermuda is actually British money. Perhaps on that question of ownership, you would clarify uh, that. And then getting back to Britain to continue the debate, it seems to me that it's the state's monopoly over development rights of land that is the key issue here to get underneath ownership. And by having that monopoly, uh, and being entirely in hock to the Buddha of Balmoral, um, Prince Charles, and the uh, three men in a dog who run government policy on the Green Belt, they're called the Campaign to Protect Rural England, uh, it seems to me that the monopoly is enormously straightened and toughened so that house prices uh, are effectively underwritten by Gordon Brown uh, not wanting to change the planning regime very quickly. I'm delighted by your thumbs up, um, but I trust you'll give a suitably polemical repast. Yeah. James, thank you for that. I have come to the conclusion that that is true. He's prepared to do nothing to... The 70% of us who own homes are quite well off. Gordon Brown's not going to do anything to rock the boat, even if in the long term... It would be a good thing. Now, in the little close I live in, uh, most people, apart from ourselves, are Daily Mail readers and very conservative. But I did a poll, I, and most of them have paid off their mortgage. And I said, how many of you would take a 25% hit on the value of your house to get your grandchildren onto the housing market? All six of them voted yes. Ordinary people do think realistically, they too do think rationally, but I'm not sure, you know, political parties searching for votes don't. But can, can I just, can I have one moment to talk about creep? The Council for the Protection of Rural England, I phoned them up last year because uh, they produced a report, and I said, how big is rural England? And the answer, I promise you, was no idea. I went, hey. So I said, okay, how big is England? No idea. How much of it is rural? No idea. I'm serious. So, about eight months ago, the Council for the Protection of Rural England produced a report. And the report said, if we carry on building at the rate we're building, rural England will have vanished in 30 years. Hmm. Only 2,000 years wrong. The figure was hidden on about page nine of the report. We're concreting over 14,400 acres a year. Well, it's going to take us another 2,000 years to concrete over rural England. And all the media reproduced that. Nobody checked it. Nobody said, divide rural England by that figure. What do you get? And the answer was 2,000 years. I don't think it's something to worry about just at the minute. Hello. Hello? Yes, that's yeah. working. Um, my name is Rosemary Johnson. Um, I'd like to ask if you could possibly say how common land, or at least what our, us deluded and ignorant serfs would regard as common land, um, would fit into your scenario. And it's, um, 
abuse, uses of the abuses. Um, I should maybe add that I come from a part of northeast London where we are seeing all our precious, valuable green open spaces, common land, about to be, uh, I believe the technical word is perpressured, per per um, to be built on, concreted over, turned into car parks or otherwise fed stuff. Thank you. Okay. Now, um, there's a common mis there's a common mis misperception about common land. Common land always had owners, but ordinary people in the villages around it had rights. And the strangest thing about the enclosures, England is only 32 million acres, and during the enclosures, 8 million acres of common land was enclosed. So, and in, what's it, for its 32, a quarter of England was enclosed. Now, the right holders, the enclosure acts were unconstitutional because Magna Carta, which was effective in those days, uh, prohibited taking... Uh, land or rights without compensation. But there's not a lot of common, I couldn't detect a lot of common land left. It's, it's, a lot of it's gone. But the, you know, when, when you get a gang like the Council for the Protection of Rural England, the, I think the question you should ask is, the one a detective asks when he looks at a crime scene, who, cui bono, who benefits? And the answer is, a, an acre of rural land that's change to, to uh, development goes from £3,000 to £1 million overnight. So it's in the interests of those with a lot of land to keep everyone else thinking land is scarce. All of us in the United Kingdom live on 4.2 million acres out of 60 million. The country is nearly empty. Uh, the oddest thing is I came up from Exeter in a train and looking out the window, you're passing through an empty countryside. And if you read the newspapers, yeah, oh man, there's, you know, new, every field has got its new supermarket. And it's, we have been sold the most extraordinary image of our country it just doesn't exist. I remember taking the BBC down to um, Exeter and we drove out. Now, Exeter is a city of 100,000 people. And we were about 300 yards out of the city and it disappeared behind a hill. And the, the BBC girl was saying, where's Exeter? I said, it's, it covers about 1% of Devon. And it's behind the hill there. Because she was looking at all this countryside. 